Shalom Ras Tafarine, Ras Yadinos Tafarine. I want them Yadom of the line of Jewish society of his imperial majesty and the church of Ras Tafari, Ras Tafari. Now we want to touch on one of our favorite um, subject matters, which is prophecy, which is biblical scriptural prophecy. Prophecy is so very, very interesting. Even the book of Revelation reminds us, in the book of Revelation, it reminds us of the importance of prophecy. And let's just touch on this um, for a moment. Um, and there's some really important prophecies that are unfolding right now. Um, a particular 2,500-year prophecy, 2,500 years. Now, we've touched on some of the heavenly signs because it says that there would be signs in the heavens as well as signs on earth. So some of the signs that we want to address herein concern the signs that are on earth. First of all, considering prophecy in the book of Revelation, and we're using the, the, Schofield, um, the Schofield Reference Bible, which is, in our opinion, um, and this is based on looking at various other Bibles and what sort of um, information it contains, study information, the accuracy of the study information, as well as the non-denominationalism. I say non-denominationalism is that some Bibles are written from certain particular church or denominational perspectives. That does not mean that it's wrong. But for, for say, a newcomer in biblical prophecy, we don't want to get ones caught up on particular denominationalism. You know, certain denominations have their own particular interpretation, and they may be correct here or there, but we want to get a good groundation of Scripture, comparing Scripture to Scripture. So you begin to be able to comprehend and understand Scripture in the context of itself, as well as God, his word, and history. So God and history is the judge as the king of kings. Caduce Abatachin reminds us of. Now, there's a particular uh, footnote that I don't, I don't know whether I'll be able to find it right here, but it'll be very important to find this particular um, footnote because it kind of ties into a further point that we would like to make as we go forward forward in this and to even demonstrate how and why the Schofield uh, Reference Bible is is particularly well suited for a scholar or a disciple because of it explaining scripture within context of scripture, accurate history, and basically there's not a lot of whitewashing to it. You understand it defines you know, the Gentiles as the Gentiles and points to the respective nations, speaking of the Europeans, um, points to Africa and, and, and the promised land, the holy land as well. Give me one moment. I just want to go through this and see. Okay, I found it. I found this footnote here is in Isaiah, at the bottom of Isaiah chapter 9. Now, those who have a Schofield study Bible, just make a note of that. Check it out. If you don't have a Schofield Study Bible and would like to use one on your computer or mobile device, go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, and there's a free PDF. You can download that and utilize that as a, as a, study, as a, as a study aid or resource, right? So there's other resources that we also have at the website, and we've been uploading some new resources. So bookmark www.lojsociety.org and you know visit visit there send a contact if if one seeks seeks to co-labor or have some questions or a contact a link so forth and so on and although the harvest is is plentiful and laborers are few please be patient and diligent maybe send you know send a send a repeated contact you know give us the opportunity to respond, and if we haven't responded, then please contact I and I again. All right, um, right here, Revelation. So we're in Revelation right now. Revelation chapter one is this is part one. Speaks of the things which thou hast seen, 
and in this section says the revelation of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show or shew to his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John, who be a record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now, here's the key right here. It says, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, we get a blessing when we read. There is a blessing in reading. You know, you hear reading is, is fundamental, the basic th three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Reading is very important even for your spiritual health. Reading is very, very um, important. And it says, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and those that hear. Now, not everyone wants a blessing. So some don't want to read and some don't want you to read and to study this. So the light has to be separated from darkness. And we say watch and pray and grow in spiritual strength and um, ask the Father, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tach, in the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus Christ. You know, make your petitions, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes we don't tap into that spiritual resource of prayer, but we have to hear the word. We have to read the word. We have to study the word. We have to also memorize, commit the word to, to heart. And that's learning the word by heart is memorizing the word. And then we can truly meditate it day and night because then we have it in here and in here in in head as well as in heart now the name of this particular um i'll call it a lecture but it's actually a update because of some of the recent events let me just bookmark this page right here because some of the recent events that are happening particularly the the recent events in in europe now some say europe you know, what, what, what about Europe? We're in America, so forth and so on. What does Europe have to do with it? Europe has a whole lot to do with it, in particular, the events that are going on right now. Now, the French election, do you know anything about the French election? Do you really follow up on global and world news? It's very important to do so, especially if you're approaching this from a faith base. You know, if you say that I am of the household of faith, I'm a Christian, and especially for us as Rastafari and Ethiopian Hebrews, it's very important to know what's going on in the world. In other words, the present story, the present narrative, the present so-called, quote, history, and then to compare and to pray and to fellowship with others and to seek out those spiritual resources. Now, I'll just give you a little background on what was the inspiration in going into this video right now. First of all, we've been speaking on these subject matters. You know, some people think when we talk about World War II or the, the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, they say, yeah, that was the past. We've got to move past that, so forth and so on. And now we're in 2012. But what a lot of folks don't know is that many of the events that have happened very recently, some recent events. We're saying as recent as the last couple of days, couple of couple of weeks, and we're in what was this, um, May of 2012. Some of the events just recently are all lining up into something that a lot of folks thought was impossible. If you go back to the 1950s, so forth and so on, the Club of Rome, the Berlin Club, so forth and so on, people would have said, oh, well, that could never happen. And many did say that could never happen. So here's some of the background, basically, so you understand. And maybe you can check out some of these resources where others also present um, their Bible studies as well as their interpretation of these particular events. One is the Keys of David. The Keys of David, I think it's dot, I believe it's dot com, but you can look it up, The Keys of David. Um, I took some notes over here. Here it goes. 
Got some notes over here. Um, yeah, the revival of the so-called Holy Roman Empire. The revival of the Roman Empire. Now, some say, the Roman Empire? What are you talking about, the Roman Empire? You see, and if that's your approach, then you have a lot of catch-up to do. But here's the good news, that the information is out there. You understand the information is available. If one seek it out, ones can find it. And this is the beautiful thing. It's like Daniel's prophecy. And the book of Daniel has also a whole lot to do with this. So some of the recent things going on in America also connects with that big global picture. And it has everything to do with the economy, what we're seeing with the present economy and, and the whole global economic situation has a lot to do with it. Germany is on the rise. In other words, we're speaking about um, fascism is on the rise. This whole globalism that's going on on a certain level, especially coming out of Europe, the euro, is very important to watch the euro. And what we've been doing is we've been checking out like um, Deutsche Welle, which is a, a German news service. Also, they have a program called The Journal. comes on um, daily. We also check out the BBC or the British Broadcast um, ser ser uh, ser British Broadcasting Company or something like that. Not the other BBC, you know. Anyway, forget about that right there. You know what I mean? But we've been checking out a lot of the the the, the news, the news that's out there, and much of the news that's out there. Not speaking about the local news. We check out local news as well to know what's going on so far. I know some folks can't deal with a lot of the, the news and some people say I don't really check out what's going on. I just stay, you know, praying and so but you have to. You see the Revelation is is a, is a key book. You know saying we have to recognize what is going on so we know spiritually, scripturally what time it is. And it's 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 not scary for us, but we very, you know, we pray for others who really don't know what time it is because events have a strange way of just just um, flipping, you know. I mean, a lot of the global events, the, the setup is really, it's really, really interesting. Anyway, enough of that. Anyway, um, we were watching, we turned on to the program um, Keys of David. Um, and they were talking about um, the whole German, the, the, the German and the, the Euro geopolitical picture in, in, in connection with Daniel's prophecy and how more than ever things are beginning to line up. Um, they're, they're connected with, um, they're a, you could say, a spiritual children in a sense or spiritual offspring um, of um, uh, what's his name, Herbert Armstrong, of, of Herbert Armstrong. No doubt for the Rastafari, you'll recall Herbert Armstrong the, in The Plain Truth, The Plain Truth magazine. He had interviewed um, um, His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, elect of God, the King of Kings of Ethiopia. And he gave a, a very wonderful and accurate um testimony. And as a Bible scholar, though there's some nuances that one might disagree with here or there, he was an excellent Bible scholar as well as accurately, in sense, accurately um, gave a testimony to Hila Selassie. So there's a particular plain truth issue. You can look up Plain Truth magazine and Hila Selassie and go and read the article for yourself, but the Keys of David is another program, uh, a, a present program. You can go to their website actually, and this particular week, when hopefully we'll get to post this up soon, and um, right after we record it, we'll try to post it up there. Go to the Keys of David, check out the vid. They have some of the vids there where they're talking about the rise of of of, of the Holy Roman Empire, as well as this being part of the whole prophetic beast and. What's the other note right here? Let's see. Some of the key points. Um, the keys of David, prophetic beast, Nahum's prophecy, revival of the Roman 
and the rival of the Roman Empire. Okay, so here's what's interesting. In this particular program, and they always leave out, uh, unfortunately, you know, we, we could say maybe it's racism, and it probably has to do, but I think a lot of it's a part of a systemic, it's a systemic problem, you know, because so many um, Western European and Anglo-American scholars have, have um, ignored uh, the, the black people or the African people or the Ethiopian people and the, and, and, and the Israelites from the black experience. So they're not able, it's like they have a blindness. So when you listen to the program, he was speaking about Mussolini and, and Mussolini's um, um, fascist Italy, how that was the, the, the sixth head of the beast how that, that was the sixth head of the beast of the Roman Empire and the connection with Mussolini and fascist Italy and Nazi Germany, in the words of the, the, the Franco, what's known as the Franco-German alliance, or some call it the Germano-Franco alliance. Now, if you've been checking out the news, you will probably have seen that um, um, what's his name, Sarkozy, um, lost the election in France. And now the so-called socialists, um, there's a new socialist uh, uh, president of, of, of France. And a lot of the people who study these things and been watching these things, and this is what the Keys of David pointed out, there's a lot of quotes and references from different magazines, recent magazines that where a lot of the writers, you know, the, the, the uh, reporters and political pundits and so forth and so on are very shocked at what they're seeing. They basically are testifying that the events that are happening now in 2012 are much like on a political level of Europe are much like the events of 1938. You know, and 1938, you have to understand that there was an alliance between Germany and France. This alliance between Germany and France is now broken. And the alliance now is moving in the same order of biblical prophecy from Daniel. And what's so shocking to a lot of folks is that ones could not imagine previous to the present time that these things could have even happened. You know, so if you go back into the archives, many folks were talking about that's why they don't believe in the Bible because this can't happen because, look, everything is going another direction. But now all of a sudden it's like everything is flipping on the geopolitical world and global level, especially out of Europe, and these things are lining up in the exact um prophetical sequence that was written about nearly 2,500 years ago. So we're speaking about the prophecies in the book of Daniel, namely chapters 10 to chapters 12. Yet if we go into like chapters 8, the, the, the longest prophecy in the Bible is said to be between Daniel chapter 10 to Daniel chapter 12. Yet that is a further um, illumination or expansion on previous prophecies in the same book. So when you study chapter 8 of Daniel and study 10 to 12. Now, there's a lot of resources out there, first, first and foremost. For us to go through all of the nuance and the details here, we would be here a very long time. And I think that you can avail, I know you can avail yourself of a lot of these resources out there if you just check out like say the keys of david first of all so check out the keys of david program the recent may um 2012 programs of the keys of david the online you can check it out also um call them or write and request some of the free booklets and a subscription to what is it the philadelphia a free subscription to the philadelphia trumpet as of present we haven't even done this our, ourselves i think we received some of their resources previously but maybe we didn't update it they have two free booklets one is called the prophetic beast 
and the, the, the next one is on Nahum. Nahum, one of the so-called minor prophets, one of the so-called 12 minor prophets of, of the Old Testament. So what we're seeing is something very, very amazing. Those who study biblical prophecies, um, like myself and others and out there, are completely um, shocked, but yet it's good news to those of us of faith. You see what I'm saying? So there are bad times. There are days of tribulation which are knocking. Some can say banging, literally banging at the proverbial doors, even as we speak. And some of these events are going right under the radar. A, a lot of folks are not even perceiving because many folks, though they pretend to be Christian or nominally are Christian, Christian in name, they really don't have faith or believe what is written in the Bible. They really don't have faith or believe what Second Corinthians four and four says that 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 the God of this world is the devil. Nor do they accept what what um, I think Revelation twelve I think it's twelve and nine or around their parts um, says as well that um, Satan the devil has deceived the whole world. This is why. It's only those folks who've been studying prophecy and studying world history and, and studying um, the recent events who really are beginning to, to sound the trumpet. And ironically, from so-called Christianity among so-called Christians, if your pastor, your preacher is not saying, saints, just, 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 just watch and pray and be on the alert because biblical prophecy has opened up. If your pastor or preacher is not on point, guess what? Your pastor or preacher is not on point. And on a spiritual level, you're in trouble. You understand? You are in trouble if your pastor and your preacher is not really dealing with these particular prophecies. You understand? And warning, you know, warning the, the, the family of God, warning the faithful, you understand? Warning their flock, their sheep about what is really going on in this present time. We are witnessing the rise of the seventh head, what's known as the seventh head of the so-called, quote, Holy Roman Empire, of the Roman Empire, because now the whole axis, the axis, what they call the axis in Europe, is a particular axis. We don't have a map, but in the um, Key of David video, they actually talk about it. Let's clear this for, for, for a moment so we can maybe put a couple of notes up here, you understand, and begin to touch on this biblical um, prophecy going on. Now, what's interesting, as above, so below, right? right there's, there's something said, as above, so below, right? Or the, the, the Father's will, His heavenly will is being done. Now, this is a question that we have as Rastafari because we, of the new name, we recognize the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. We recognize Kedamawi, Haile Selassie. And in a, and in a, in a strange sense, if you read the particular Plain Truth um, article of um, Herbert Armstrong, Herbert Armstrong also notices that connection, too, of his imperial majesty and clearly has no doubt whatsoever. Being a student of history, Bible prophecy, he, does, he, he doesn't refute, question the title of Moa Andesa, the Imma Negeta Yehuda, or the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, which Kedamawi Haile Selassie bore and still bears. Because in this whole biblical prophecy about this present time and the rise of the, the seventh um, head of the beast, seeing that Mussolini, right, Mussolini, remember the same Mussolini and the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, that prophetically was the sixth, the sixth head of the beast. Now, how interesting is that? Because Bible prophecy says that the beast goes against the saints and the beast martyrs and slays the saints. 
and we spoke to you and others like Sister Waleta uh, Salasi, um, uh, Imani, Sister Imani, and you could go check out her site, Ethiopian Holocaust. Google it, Ethiopian Holocaust online. Check out the sister's website. Um, it's very interesting because, oh, we have this book. We can show you um, Abuna Yisahak's Abuna Yisahak's book. If you can hold on for one, hold on for one moment, brothers and sisters. All right. All right, give thanks, give, give thanks and praise. All right, here we go. We just had to order a copy. We had another copy, but um, a Decepticon basically had had stole it from I and I. You know, another copy of this. Um, it's called. Let's give you. Let's show you the cover right here. It's called the Ethiopian Tawahido. Some say Tawahido, but really it's Tawahido. Church, or the Ethiopian Tawahido Church. Now, some would call the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido Church, or the EOTC, but this is really the correct title right here for the church, the Ethiopian Tawahido Church, because the word Tawahido, when properly understood, is the ancient orthodoxy, which is biblically, biblically based. You understand? Tawahido, right? means to be made one in the sense of Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad, Ahad, or Besama Awa Lemenfes Kedus, Ahad Wamlak. Now, this is our brother right here, um, Abuna Yisahak, the late Abuna Yisahak, the one whom Kedamawi Halasalas he sent to the West. You know, to us, lost sheep of the Beit Israel on the West. And, and this is just some proof of the atrocities that were committed against the saints. This is uh, Abuna uh, Paulos. You know, saying he was martyred for his faith by the Italians, by the fascists, by the Roman Empire. This right here, if you can see the bottom, where it says, kill everyone who wears or carries the cross, right? We showed you some of these pictures in the other vid, right? Um, you can see down here, uh, Ethiopian being, you know, um, I think he was killed, being marred to there. Also another priest, the, the same priest right there, um, one with the statue of the priest, the memorial statue of, of, of Bishop Michael, actually. He was killed. He was killed um, by the fascists. This brother right here, he was killed. These are ancient Ethiopian Christians, right? Ancient Ethiopian Christians in 1937-38. These were ones who were massacred. You understand? Who were massacred or martyred. Well, I'm, I'm showing you these pictures, right? I'm, I'm showing you these pictures right here. Um, some of these pictures are a little dark, but you definitely can see this right here. This is a massacre that took place in 1937 by the fascists by the Roman Empire of the saints of the Ethiopian Hebrew saints this is real this is real you understand this is this is real some of these pictures you know you can see this is a human being being tortured and killed you know and some of these other pictures uh, don't want to show this but this is this is the head ones being beheaded remember it says that they will be beheaded you know, and Revelation talks about those who would be beheaded for their faith. So we get to see the actual witnesses. This is the evidence. You know what I'm saying? You see the head down there being beheaded for their faith in the true Christ. You can see this right here. And one of these lackey fez, fez wearers right there. You see right there. That's why we have some issues with some of those you know, those with the Fez, because some of your cooperate the enemy, you know, you see that head right there? He's holding the head. Look at that. He's holding the head right there. You see? So this is evidence. So when you're reading Revelation, right, when you're reading Revelation, 
and it talks about how the how the saints um how the saints were martyred you know when when you're reading about that uh, such a book like this gives you some of the evidence you know what I'm saying but just study more on Mussolini fascist Mussolini and when we say fascist that's what they call that's what they were called fascist you know the fascist armies the Italian Ethiopian war however Mussolini calls that the rise of the Roman Empire. This is what's so very interesting. And they needed to conquer in Mussolini's mind and the mind of like-minded or mindless ones. They had to conquer Ethiopia because Ethiopia was never conquered by Rome throughout no historical time period. They got as far as the Meroe which now will be in Sudan because, remember, ancient Ethiopia wasn't just the, 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 the limited foreign borders that we see today. It extended. This is why there's a whole big debate of whether, you know, the Ethiopian eunuch really from Ethiopia or Ethiopia today or whether that was Sudan. In ancient times, the Ethiopian empire, which was much greater, you understand, and the Ethiopian, the title Ethiopian, was used like we use African in a sense today, especially African of that eastern region. So there's a there's an important connection, there's an Ethiopian connection to prophecy that's often avoided. Now, here's what's so very interesting about these events right now. So we have the rise, let's just put this up here. We have the rise, right, of the seventh Right, the seventh head of the Roman Empire. Right, and this is 2012. Something that was totally unexpected, something that if we were to listen to the political people over the past 40 or so years, they told us that this could not happen. They, they said that the whole geopolitical picture was in such a way that it would take like an earthquake or something for all this to happen. It was almost totally impossible that we would be witnessing on the geopolitical stage what we're witnessing today. In other words, things are aligning in 2012 in dramatically the same fashion as things were aligning in the so-called, now get this right here, the German, right, the German Italian, right, the German Italian axis, right, so what we have right here is, this is new, this is all new, this is all new as of 2012, we can say as of May, 2012 and the French election. This is why some of y'all may not have paid much attention to it, but you must have heard that. Well, in France, there's a there's a new prime minister and he's a socialist, and everyone was chattering about it. You know, we saw it on a lot of the news stations, and it was kind of like, wow, why they're talking about this so much? But when we started to listen to the story, we were like, oh, this is significant. You understand? Know Yet. We didn't know exactly at the time how significant it is, the fact that Sarkozy, his particular government, is now gone. And, and prior to this, this is the new German-Italian axis, as it was in World War II, prior to World War II and during World War II, we have the same sort of alignment. So this is a realignment. Now, Daniel's prophecy speaks a lot about this. And to get into some of the details, we will be here for, for you know, we're going to touch on the details. Don't get I and I wrong, but so that ones can do their own work and their homework. Once again, the Keys of David. Check out the Keys of David, the website. Check out the vid that they produce. I think it's like a half an hour or so vid, and they have some free um, study materials. The Prophetic Beast is one, and Nahum's Prophecy is another, and a free subscription to the, I think, Philadelphia Trumpet. So while there's an opportunity, while we're in a state of um, relative peace, not safety, 
but relative peace, peace being the opposite of war, but not safety because all are not saved. You see, all are not saved. So let's understand, we don't say peace and safety, but we're in a relative state of peace. In other words, there's not war going on, um, hot war, maybe a cold war, but not a hot war just yet. But this, these events are leading dramatically, are leading, because this is, this is a change, this is a big change in the euro. This is a big change in the euro. And Germany, right, Germany is very, very important. Germany is the richest, it has the best economy right now in the whole entire Western world. Basically, Germany calls the shots. And this is so very interesting. It's, it's almost like um, we're not going to say that it's like Hitler, but it's the same um, political dynamic as at the time of Hitler. All that remains is for this particular um, Antiochus type of leader to rise up you understand, according to according to Bible prophecy, let's go to Jeremiah. I mean, uh, Daniel. Let's go to Daniel right now. Let's go to Daniel for a moment and touch on a couple of the main uh, scriptural points that we were reminded about even while watching the, the the program and the production. So here's what we got. Um, let's go to chapter chapter. Let's see, chapter, um, probably chapter 8. Yeah, let's go to chapter 8. Chapter 8. Um, and in chapter, okay, we're cha that's chapter 9. Chapter 8 right here, right? Chapter 8. So, um, here's, okay, let's, let's begin with verse 15. Verse 15. Now, Schofield here has some very interesting footnotes, and those of the disciples, our brothers and sisters, take out the, you know, do, do your homework on this. As you, as you begin, just become familiar with this, because you might read some of it, might not understand, comprehend everything, but reading, there's a blessing in reading. In fact, um, um, we pointed out the five-fold, the five-fold, um, spirituality first you have to hear the word when you hear the word you utilize at least between 10 to 20 of your mind of your mental potential you understand you retain at least 10 to 20 percent you understand then when you um when you hear the word just hearing the word 10 to 20 percent hearing is the, is the start one has to hear the word but then when you read the word you understand, when the word is read, this is now 20 to 40 percent. When you study the word, and this is all scripture, when you study the word, that is, that is 40 to 60 percent. When you memorize or learn it by heart, memorize the word, that is another 60 to 80 percent. Now when you meditate, meditation is very, very important, but meditation True meditation must have that, that fourfold foundation, and that fourfold foundation is hearing of the word, is reading of the word, is study of the word, is memorizing, is using your memory, you understand, or learning it by heart. You understand, learning it by heart. People say, I love the Lord in my heart, but do you learn his word by heart? You understand, we can remember a whole lot of other things in the, in, in the world, worldliness, but how much of the word do we commit to our memory? Do we learn it by heart? You see, just think about how many things you, you, you know, you know by heart, whether you care about them or not. If you care about God's word, memory and memorizing the word is important, but you have to begin, first of all, with hearing the word. You understand, this is why some of the audio books and other kind of things are very, very important. And we also have, um, you know, some, some, some audio reading and studies that, that it's good to keep your, your ears, like what you hear depends and determines your faith. It's like if somebody tells you you're nothing, you're nobody over and over again, you begin to believe that, even to a small extent. 
but, but it begins to work its way into your consciousness while conversely and vis-a-vis, if you hear positive and encouraging and affirming things, this also you begin, so it depends on what you hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and the hearing for us in true spirituality should be by the word of Jah, by the word of God. So in order for meditation, when we speak about med- I know this is another subject matter, but it, it, it connects with it because one needs to understand the spiritual tools that they need you understand, in the right order. You see, the, the, the order is very important because people say, I, I meditate. Yes, I, I know is meditating. Well, do you hear? Have you heard? Um, do you read? Do you study? Do you memorize? And when you go in that particular order, it is much easier to memorize the word. When you hear the word, when you um, uh, read the word, read the word that you heard. So when you hear this message and we point out, say, we're in Daniel's prophecy, Daniel chapter 8. And we're going to go from Daniel chapter 8, um, verse 15. And, and so you hear, you're going to hear it. Now are you going to write it down? You understand? So if you can't study it right now, you can study it later on. And make that time to go and just go over it. It doesn't mean you're going to comprehend everything all at once. But you have to become familiar with it. You've got to become familiar with this data, familiar with this information, because this information, where else do we hear it? You understand? And even some of the other uh, Bible, you know, Christian shows, especially if they study the Word, you know, a lot of these ones, if they just kind of take a verse and go through a whole bunch of emotionalism, you know, that's, you know, that's, that, that's not according to the order. That's not according to the teaching or the testimony of Christ. A lot of that emotionalism that you find in some versions or perversions of Christianity, you know, and, and too much of the black church has kind of descended into that nonsense. You know, saying this is why our people don't know what's going on. You understand? They don't know why. They don't know who they are, where they're at, what's going on. They, they're always... You know, they're lost, lost sheep. You understand? But those who are once lost but now found have an opportunity, you understand, to, to, to learn it. And, and hopefully by their living testimony, others would come to the knowledge of the truth. You understand? So the reading, the fourfold foundation for good meditation is this. Read, uh, hearing, reading, studying, and memorizing. It's easier for you to memorize when you hear, read, and study. It's easier for you to read it when, when, when you hear it. You understand? So the hearing and the reading kind of reinforces each other. And then the study reinforces the hearing and the reading. And then now with hearing and reading and studying your memory, you begin to now remember a lot of this. So when when there is a manifestation in reality, the Holy Spirit now can can speak to you because you have it's like a bank account you have invested in it. Now you can draw out of it. So ones wonder why why don't they get anything out of it? Because what are they putting into it to put in that time and sabbatical time for us keeping the the annual and the weekly Sabbath for the weekly and the annual Sabbath is very very important in that particular matter. It, it, it kind of helps us. It assists us. Why the Messiah said that the Sabbath was made for man. It was made to benefit us in our life, in this world and in the world to come, and to strengthen our spirituality so we can tap in to that spiritual, that spiritual power and we can be blessed, whether male or female. I, I, I say that because there's there's no distinction. You understand? There's no distinction. You know, before before God, we are sons and daughters, and He seeks to pour out. You understand? In this time and age of what they call Aquarius, but He seeks to pour out on us as children to pour out. You know, to pour His Spirit out upon us. But now for those others. You understand? Who are disobedient, disagreeable, he pours out wrath. 
So yes, it's the age of Aquarius. It's a time of pouring out. But whether one is receiving the Holy Spirit or one is receiving the wrath of God or the Holy Spirit, Memphis Caduce, what they call Holy Ghost fire, but the Memphis Caduce, the Holy Spirit fire, it all depends on their inclination or disinclination. Are they inclined to the Word of God or are they disinclined? You understand? Now, let's just get into this right, right now. Uh, we'll, we'll hopefully touch a little bit more on meditation, the importance of meditation. But sometimes we say meditate on these things. And one thinks they're meditating, but no one has ever taught them that there are principles. You know, there are principles to this, just like farming, just like gardening, just like doing any particular activity where there's either fruitfulness or fruitlessness. One must learn or well, what is the order, what one is what 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 is the principles. You understand the basic principles of this. So anyway, here, here we go. The vision is interpreted here. It says, And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then behold, look and see, there stood before me as the parents of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So the voice that called and said to Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So we can have visions, but we don't really understand them. You see, and more important than just even our visions is Jah's vision. You see what I'm saying? It's Jah's vision. In fact, if we learn Jah's vision and to and what the interpretation of Jah's visions are, we can better comprehend our own visions. You know what I'm saying? Whether they are true visions or whether they are false dreams. It says, So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said to me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, here's what's very important. At the time of the end shall be the vision. So what we have right now is, quote, is the time of the end. Right? The time of the end and the, what it says, shall be the vision. Now, Bamarinya, in the, in the pure language, we call this the Arai. You understand? We call this the Arai. Uh, do we have room right here? The, right? the Arai shall be the vision, shall be the Arai. You understand? So I want you to just keep that in mind, the Arai. Now, Revelation is called Ye Johannes Arai, or Araio Le Johannes in the Goodness. And that's the vision of. John, John, Johannes means in the Hebraic it means Jah's grace or the grace of Jah. Now we are saved by what? We are saved by grace, not by works, not by money, not by anything that we might have or anything that we think we are. No, we're saved by undeserved merit or undeserved favor, what is called grace. So. The vision of Jah's grace is what we know as the book of Revelation. Now, there's a connection in the content and the message of Revelation and this particular book and the visions of the prophets concerning the time of the end. So it says, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the arai. At the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright. So when he was speaking, Don L or Daniel was in a deep sleep on his face, facing facing down toward the ground, but he, speaking of the Melaak or the angel Gabriel, he touched him, and that touch he wrote he 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 he, he was set upright. You understand? He was set upright. He he got up, 
And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. In other words, we are coming to the end of the end of this particular this particular um I would say this particular cycle, series of cycles. You understand? But the, he says the end, the end of time, the time of the end. So remember we said that Mussolini and the events that this book has some some amazing pictures that chronicles the the Ethiopian Holocaust, the martyrdom of the Kedusan or the Kedoshim, the saints that we showed you a little bit earlier. That Mussolini said that it was the sixth that the Roman Empire that he was seeking to help to raise up, you know, and this is also when 1928, the Lateran um, Treaty, and if, and if you're a Bible scholar, you understand, of, of end time prophecies, you should know about the Lateran Treaty. The Lateran Treaty is very significant. Some say that was the fulfillment of the 1,260-year um, prophecy concerning um, 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 the Pope, the Vatican, the man of sin, so forth and so on. This is when um, 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 the Pope became king. In other words, the Pope became king. And this is why the Vatican City is the smallest so-called nation state. That means that the, the religious and the, the secular are, 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 are together within the Vatican. So now the Pope can step on the world stage as a, quote, world leader with all the prerogatives of any other world leader. But that was cut for 1,260 years up until um, 1920, um, around 28 and the Lateran. And, the, and what's known as 2829 and the Lateran Treaty. And we know about the stock market crash, so forth and so on, the dark day. And that's all a connection. And then in 1930, we get the crowning of Ketamawi Haile Selassie. Then in 1936, the first signs of, and in 37, the invasion, the fascist invasion in the 36 of Ethiopia, right? And in 37, we have the evidence of the martyrdom as per revelation, because it says that the beast was angry at that remnant. So the Ethiopians, the faithful Ethiopians of that zemin, of that age, represents that remnant that we have spoken of in the book of Revelation. You understand? And see, this is the half of the story. Now, what's interesting is that the Ethiopians also are mentioned again in this particular, in this particular book as well. Yokes and in this particular book as well. But let's go on. Let's get up to that point. So, so the angel had said to Donnell, Behold, look and see, I will make thee know, not to guess, not to believe, but you're going to know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. So there's an appointed time. Now, remember when... Um, the disciples are asking Christ concerning the kingdom being restored to Israel, so forth and so on. And, and, and Christ said, it's not for you to know that which is in the authority of the Father. You understand? So it says that not even, not even the Son knows, not the angels in heaven, that none knows but the Father, the Abba. Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin. So we're about to witness what they call the return of Christ, also known as the return of the King of Kings. You understand? Know the return of the King of Kings. And really the restoration of the divine monarchy and the connection, the key is connected with Ethiopia and with Edomawi Haile Selassie. A lot of folks are going to be like, oh, no, I can't. He's dead. He's gone, so forth and so on. That's what you think. That's, that's what the heathen think about Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. They thought that this German, Germano, Italian access, as it was in 38, you see even the many of the political pundits that are talking about the present events that are going on, 
the shifting of this global axis from Franco-German to what it was in the time of the Roman Empire, the German-Italian. So when you look at the map, it's very interesting. Germany on top, right, and Italy, that boot at the bottom, and a small little strip of land between the two. But that's exactly the sort of alignment that was during, during the days just before and during World War II. So, so as it was before, it's almost as though we've, we've stepped into some, um, like a twilight zone, so to speak. But really what we've stepped into and, and what's happening now is the opening of this particular prophecy. Now, it's, 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 it's interesting because um, we see a lot of the, the, the countries, you know, the power, the players mentioned, Medea, which in a sense would be like Iraq, we have Persia, Iran, we have Greece. You know, Greece has been in the news, the whole Greek thing, austerity thing. Um, and if we move a little further down here, in verse 23 it says, and in the latter time of their kingdom, the latter time, this is what we're witnessing right now on the global world stage, the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences. Some say these dark sentences are like something occultic and cryptic on that sort of level. Shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Now, many have wondered is. Even some say this could be, uh, not, not, they say Bush is like this. Others have said, well, um, maybe this is Obama. It's interesting what um, the, 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 the Key of David program had actually said. They said that when you study this, you, you come to the conclusion that this particular super king, you understand, this particular um, strong man of Europe will not be an elected official, because as they connect this, as we move a little bit more forward, it says, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and shall practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Now, what you have to understand about this particular prophecy here is that this prophecy has been unfolding for a period of world global time, as we know time, for 2,500 years for a period of 2,500 years. Let's just put this down right here. So we have a period of 2,000, um, 2,000, right, 500 years, right? And that is circa the book of Daniel, right? That's Daniel's, let's put this right here, that's Daniel's vision or Rai, the vision that Daniel saw. Now, you know something interesting about this number, 2,500? Because a lot of folks will say that folks who are looking at the heavenly signs, such as Nibiru, above, as above, would say, well, there's, there's a particular 2,500-year cycle. You've been hearing a lot. Uh, th th these numbers begin to sound very much similar. And the Word says that there would be signs, and, and Yeshua says to us, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says to us, there would be signs in heaven as well as signs on earth. So among the politics and the political movements and positioning on earth and in politics and governments and, and policies, economic and military and otherwise, religious as well, there'll be these, these shiftings, reshiftings, repositionings, but there also would be significant and dramatic signs in heaven as well. Now, Daniel, here, Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter 8, and we're at verse... Um, 25, 24 actually says, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and holy people. Let's just, let's just um, 
reflect on a little bit of um, history and our story. All right? We have Mussolini, right? Mussolini, right? We have fascist Italy, right? Fascist Italy. He called it, he called that, that period of time the sixth head, right? The sixth head, right, of the Roman Empire. Isn't this interesting? Right? So Mussolini's, right, 1936 was the sixth head of this beast. Now it becomes clear when we read His Majesty's um, speech, you understand, um, May 5th, 1941, the New Day speech, the Independence Day speech, the Victory Day speech, when the, the holy people of the King of Kings and His Christ Along with Britain, and we have to we have to note Britain here. I know among the Rastafari there is some um, uh, disappointment with our allies, because His Majesty, the King of Kings, Kadamari Hala Selassie, says and said that the British, who also have Kedus Georgis or Saint George as a patron saint, were our allies and are our allies, and in a strange and an interesting sense, my brothers and sisters, they are our allies. I know we, we have our particular view, but we have to listen to the instruction of our Father. You understand? He says that the British were our allies then and are our allies, and how we should be on friendly terms with them. Here's what's interesting about the British. The whole Euro thing includes all the European nations except Britain, with the exception of Britain. Yes, Britain um, diplomatically and economically has, has, has links with the different European countries, but Britain is not under the euro. Tony Blair said tried to do that, but, you know, some of the people, whether they understood prophecy or, or not clearly, they resisted that particular effort. So Britain is also where it was on a political level in 2012 to where it was in 1936. How interesting is this? Now the news, you know, on the news, the, the media, they, there's so many different topics to distract people's attention. Um, so they're not going to speak about it until this, this, this runs hot and red. You know, you're not going to really, you might, if, you, if, if you're key to prophecy, if you understand what's going on, you might pick up significant chatter here or there. But you're not going to really find it in the mainstream press directly. You understand? Because most of those people are godless, are faithless, have sold their souls. You understand? So they basically are just looking at it from a worldly point of view they will not admit that the God of this world is the devil, as Second Corinthians 4 and 4. And they could be Christian. They could say they believe in Jesus. They could say they believe in God, so forth and so on. But do they keep the words of prophecy? You know what I'm saying? Keeping the word of prophecy means that you might have to turn, you know, against your mama, your papa, your sister, your brother, your son, your daughter, you understand, your, your, your nation, your people, if they are on the wrong side of Jah, if they are on the wrong side of God. And when I say turn against them, just say, listen, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't agree with that. You understand, that is wrong. Jah says that is wrong. But so many have sold themselves. So many have conformed. So many have been deceived. The Bible says it says that the devil Satan yeterregemeyuhun curse be he get tell you guess it it may the Lord rebuke you says that he has re deceived the whole world and those that dwell on the face of the earth. So if you're able to accept that with a clear conscience, it, it's it's comforting. Why is it comforting? It's comforting, first of all, to know that Jah is true and that there is an explanation, you understand, to all this madness and chaos that we're seeing, that 
it is not without explanation. People say nobody can understand it. No, Bible prophecy has overstood it for more than 2,500 years. But you remember, a day with the Lord, a day with Adoni, Adonai, is as a thousand years. So when he says it's a short time, some would expect it to happen all within their lifetime. You understand? And many have righteous have come and gone and have not seen this full picture, but have borne witness and testimony to what has occurred in their days. So now that we have the benefit, like we have hindsight benefit, that many of them only had prophetic foresight. You understand? They only had prophetic foresight. Now we can see that 1936, Mussolini, fascist, fascist Italy, the invasion of Ethiopia, conforms with this particular word right here about the destruction of the mighty and the holy people. Right? Those dressed in white. What does Revelation says? The martyrs, those wearing white robes. And when you look at Ethiopia from the, that period of time, that zemin, you see a, a, a witness of it. Ones have testified that Ethiopia, unlike today, you see, Ethiopia today, 1975 was an Armageddon. And we'll try to address that. There was a prophecy of the Jehovah Witness concerning Armageddon in 1975. Some say, oh, that's a false prophecy. Where's Armageddon? You know, Armageddon, like we understand, hadn't come to pass. That is because their understanding of Armageddon was wrong. We know that 1975 was very pivotal because 1975, they say, saw the end of the imperial monarchy, the 3,000-year monarchy, Ethiopian Hebrew Holy Covenant monarchy, of Haile Selassie the first and the end of the Ethiopian Hebrew monarchy. No, my brothers and sisters, it, it wasn't the end, but it was the prophetic opening of the book of Revelation that many are only beginning to recognize as they look in hindsight, even many of the careless Ethiopians, because Zephaniah 2 and 12 says, ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. And that says the Lord, saith Yahweh. What is the sword? So what is the word? The sword of Jah is the word. So we see that Jah's word is true. Jah's word is true. So the, the holy, the mighty and the holy people were destroyed. And it says, and through his policy, right, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Now, many of y'all say, you know, many of y'all probably have said, oh, peace, salam. And, and when we were watching the program, we had uh, the Yot Adayot program with Chavit side by side. And let's see if we have, um, yeah, we have it right here. Um, let's just go to this for a moment, and that's um, Daniel 8 and 28 and 25, right? 8 and 25, Daniel 8 and 25. This is why it's so very important, you understand, not to get lost in translation. You know, don't get lost in translation, 8 and 25. So it says, and through his policy also shall he cause. Now this he, this he, they say, is a figure and a character which is likened to an historical personage uh, named An An Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes. And here it says um, that this, this one is alike, that they have a hatred of the Jews and of God. As Mussolini obviously had a hatred, the sixth head of the Roman Empire had a hatred of Moa Anbesa Zeimanegeta Yehuda, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Sounds familiar like the king of the Jews, Christ in his kingly character. So you, you, you might not want to accept it because you might think nothing good can come from Nazareth. From, from Ethiopia, Yovas, but it says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Um, 
thinking about all these adoptions going on, Ethiopia you know, celebrities, there's something up with that. Just just pray, pray for the children. You know what I'm saying? Pray. Use that resource of prayer. So this particular figure is likened, right, by by the majority of biblical scholars and historians to um Antiochus. And they say Antiochus and the beast are are connected within this uh, like the little horn that's referred to in Revelation. But the beast preeminently, you understand, know preeminently when we read of um in, in chapter in chapter seven, both Antiochus and the beast and says and the little horn of Daniel seven cannot be, some say the little horn of Daniel eight, nine to thirteen and twenty three is evidence. The former comes up among the ten horns into which the fourth empire, parentheses Roman, is to be divided. The little horn of Daniel 8 comes out of one of the four kingdoms into which the third or the, the, the Grecian empire was divided, verse 23, and in latter time of the four kingdoms, verses 22 and 23. This was historically true of Antiochus Epiphanes, right? Now, this is just some of the background. I just share with you some of this footnote down here. Now, this particular he, it says, by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And let me just show you another resource, another another particular book here. I think I showed you this 